morning, everybody. My name is Thanaj Mahendru, and I'm a second year medical student at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center School of Medicine in Lubbock, Texas. I would like to first thank the Southern Medical Association for inviting me to speak on the topic of trauma management in Klippel Fail Syndrome. I would also like to thank the principal investigator of this case study, Dr. Robin Richmond, for allowing me to partake in this opportunity. Today, I will be presenting my abstract on trauma management in a 25-year-old female with Klippel Fail Syndrome. First, I'd like to start with a basic introduction and discuss what Klippel Fail Syndrome is and how it's diagnosed. Klippel Fail Syndrome is a condition that occurs when at least two cervical vertebrae have abnormally fused due to the failure of separation during fetal development. It was first discovered in 1912 by French physicians Maurice Klippel and André Fail. This is a rare condition that is found in one and out of every 40,000 infants with an increased occurrence in females. Most people are diagnosed symptomatically or by observing fetal imaging close to the time of birth. Klippel Fail patients can suffer from a multitude of orthopedic conditions. While some families choose to partake in non-surgical treatments, such as physical therapy and bracing for the lesser severe form of the disease, the only definitive form of treatment is to surgically correct the fused vertebrae. Cervical total disc arthroplasty has had positive results in improving patient outcomes. Patients with this symptoms can prevent, uh, patients with this syndrome can present with a myriad of syndromes, including short neck, low hairline, respiratory insufficiency, neurological deficits, syndactyly, and pain in the head and neck areas. The abnormal cervical vertebral fusion also restricts motility significantly for these patients. While patients may not present with all of these symptoms, they will at least present with a few of these defining features, allowing clinicians to make the diagnosis of clip fail syndrome. This can occur at a, greater ten, at a greater rate in patients who suffer from fetal alcohol syndrome, golden heart syndrome, or mutations in genes GDF6, GDF3, or MEOX1. And I've attached a few images on the slide showing a typical presentation for a patient with the short neck and low hairline. And then you can see the difference in the anatomy between a person with a normal cervical spine versus person with clipple fail syndrome uh, with the fusion between vertebrae. Now that we've had a basic introduction to the suspected pathophysiology of clipple fail syndrome, let's review the clinical presentation for this patient. A 25-year-old female was brought to the emergency department for a level one motor vehicle accident trauma. Her diagnosis with clipple fail syndrome is definitive as she presented with a characteristic short neck and patient imaging revealed a fusion between C2 and C3. She presented with normal vital signs, decreased breath sounds, intact neurological signs, and was able to move all her extremities. CT body trauma revealed a right scapula fracture and bilateral pneumothoraces. CT head and neck showed small intraparenchymal hematomas, fractures of the C2 and C3 vertebrae, and a hypoplastic C6 vertebral body. Now let's review the imaging for this patient on the slide. So there are two images, both are CT head scans without contrast. You can see there's an abnormal fusion at this junction between C2 and C3 in both images. However, at this top image, you can see a small line running through the C2 vertebrae. This is cortical disruption of the bone around C2. This is most likely attributed to the trauma sustained after the motor vehicle accident. An MRI of the C-spine showed hyperintense areas of C2 that could be a contusion. Lab testing also revealed transaminitis and leukocytosis. Now that we've had a chance to have a brief introduction and review the case presentation, let's, re let's review the management and outcome. The patient was admitted to the surgical ICU due to her altered mental status and pneumothoraces. As a result of the diffuse axonal injury, she was given IV Keppra for seizure prophylaxis. The patient received bilateral chest tubes and was intubated and mechanically vented, ventilated with a positive end expiratory pressure of 10. Chest x-ray revealed no evidence of a hemothorax. 
To manage this injury, she will need a collar with no surgical fixation. The patient continued to be monitored in the SICU and was released later that week. An Aspen C collar is being utilized to maintain C-spine stabilization precautions. Neurosurgery plans to check her AP lateral cervical spine x-rays once extubated, with the follow-up in six weeks for repeat imaging. This will ensure proper healing of the sustained injury after her car accident. Now that we've had a chance to go over the introduction, case presentation, management outcome for this patient, let's briefly review what was previously discussed in the importance of this case report. Clipple fail syndrome is a congenital anomaly that can arise due to a variety of reasons. However, the exact pathophysiology is still not known. Clinical research has allowed us to conclude an increased tendency of this condition in patients with fetal alcohol syndrome, golden heart syndrome, or mutations in the genes GDF6, GDF3, or MEOX1. Clipophil patients suffer from a multitude of orthopedic conditions and typically present with a short neck, low hairline, and significant pain in the head and neck regions. This rare diagnosis created complexities in the treatment plan given the complications of a high energy trauma superimposed on Clipophil syndrome. Clinicians should be aware going forward that patients with Clipophil syndrome are more likely to have spinal cord injuries like disc degeneration, disc herniation, spondylosis, or spinal canal stenosis. This case report is evidence of a patient having an increased length of stay and unique difficulties in their treatment plan given the complications of a motor vehicle accident in conjunction with Clipophil syndrome. Thank you. All right, great job. Do we have any questions from the attendees in the audience? Okay, so um, can you delineate the difference in approach to care of this type of motor vehicle accident in routine patients versus uh, clipple fail syndrome? So for this patient specifically, due to the congenital anomaly of a C2-C3 fusion, it allowed, it presented with complications uh, due to lack of C-spine stabilization. I believe that in a regular patient uh, without this condition, it would not complicate trauma management as they can easily access areas uh, and complete procedures and potentially do surgery without having to worry about the superimposed condition of clipophil uh, in the patient. 